What is Genlock anyways? As analog video has gone digital, it's easy to think that everything can be fixed in post-production, but this isn't always the case. Effective live streaming requires careful consideration during pre-production to ensure everything is synchronized, which ensures broadcasters offer the highest quality viewing experience with minimal delay. In this video, we'll take a closer look at what genlocking is and why broadcasters may choose to use it for their streaming infrastructure. We'll also cover black burst and tri-level reference signals, frame synchronization, and multi-device live streaming. Let's get started. What is Genlock? Genlock, or generator locking, is a broadcasting technique used by some video devices or systems to keep synchronized. This enables precisely frequency locked video signals where every device knows when a frame starts and ends. More specifically, Genlock uses a reference signal, black burst or tri-level, as the timing plane for the entire broadcasting system. Black burst versus tri-level reference signals. With Genlock, there is usually a device that's chosen as the timing reference called a sync generator. All other audio and video devices are connected to this device and synchronized to its internal clock. The two most common reference signals are black burst or tri-level. Black burst or bi-level sync is an analog signal commonly used as a reference to synchronize standard video. This blank reference signal allows for other devices within the broadcasting system to get on the same timing plane. While black burst is slowly being replaced by tri-level signals, it's still often used as a fallback for legacy equipment that only supports composite signals. Many high definition video signals, however, use tri-level synchronization because there's higher data rates and stricter timing data requirements. A tri-level signal has a higher frequency which can improve timing accuracy while reducing jitter. This leads to smoother switching between input sources during high definition streaming. The importance of sync. Genlocking ensures multiple camera and recording devices are synchronized so that the video output can seamlessly switch between these different sources without any unwanted artifacts. This is useful for live sports events with multiple camera angles or combining video data during post-production. Cameras and other hardware built by a variety of manufacturers can have slightly different internal clocks. The problem with this is that they can slowly get out of sync without genlock or frame sync. Even a few milliseconds of drift could cause displays to stutter as they readjust the horizontal or vertical scan lines. That means frames could start to display halfway down the screen instead of a full top to bottom image. Moreover, when audio is off by even a frame or two, it's noticeable by viewers. In many cases, it's difficult for broadcasters to re-synchronize after there's a drift like this, so viewers are stuck with unsynchronized audio for the duration of the live stream. Do you need Genlock? While Genlock is useful for synchronizing broadcast systems, not every camera can support it. If your cameras can receive a sync signal, whether it's black burst or tri-level, it's generally a good idea to opt for this over frame synchronization. That said, nearly every device will support frame sync. Frame synchronization ensures the frame rate of video sources are aligned, whereas Genlock synchronizes the video signals or pixels themselves. A frame synchronizer is a device that writes incoming video signals into a frame buffer, which can adjust the timing of frames across all sources during playback. The problem with frame sync is that it always adds latency, because it takes at least one frame to find out when individual frames begin and end. Genlock ensures the entire system knows this information without any additional latency or cumulative delay. That makes Genlock a better option for low latency live streaming. Another major drawback of frame sync is with embedded audio. When an input reaches a video switcher, many times the audio is stripped out of the signal. That means routing embedded audio signals through switches runs the risk of losing the audio, requiring you to re-embed the audio again later. Frame sync may work for some situations, but the best way to protect the integrity of a multi-device live streaming environment is Genlock. This approach ensures the frame rate of the entire broadcast is synchronized without introducing latency. Synchronized streaming with Resi. Resi's Prism D2202 decoder includes additional Genlock reference inputs so that you can use a black burst or tri-level central timing reference signal to synchronize your video output for your production systems. This ensures that your live streaming event has seamless audio and video for the highest viewing experience possible. And hang tight. If you wanna keep nerding out about Genlock, we've got you covered. We talked to our friends at Summit Integrated Systems for a real deep dive into Genlock and how it can help you at your next live streaming event. 
So my name is Andrew, I'm one of the project managers with uh, Summit Integrated Systems out here in beautiful Colorado. So really Genlock in a way, is a way of synchronizing uh, video devices and the video systems so that they all know where a frame starts and where a frame ends. Um, this uh, depends how deep we want to go in the weeds as to why you need it, but there's kind of a couple of ways we can really approach this. I mean, like one of them is like the idea of like um, cumulative latency through a system. I mean, you know, you have the you have gen locks, and then we also have frame syncs. Um, frame syncs always add latency because um, it literally takes a frame of latency to figure out where the frame begins and that frame ends. Whereas Genlock, because it keeps everything in sync, the entire system knows where the frame starts, where the frame ends, and there's no additional latency uh, added to the video signal. Going back historically, um, you know, the reason why it's important for video to be uh, in sync with one another is um, it can be for a few reasons, some as simple as like being able to cut from one source to another source without really introducing any artifacts. Now that's not such a big of a deal um, nowadays, but what we do see when a system is, is seen is expecting a frame to begin here and a frame to end here, and you have a whole lot of devices on that system that have made up their own mind where a frame begins and where a frame ends, um, you can actually end up with video that is completely out of sync, meaning um, you have a video that maybe starts halfway down the screen, as opposed to a video taking up the what we'd expect to see, you know, that full top to bottom uh, kind of image. And in a multi-camera, multiple pro presenter, multiple kind of source scenario, um, without sync you'd really have those images um, starting all over the place. Um, for those of you who are old enough like me, it's like back in the day VCRs we were tracking. And really tracking was a way of telling the VCR, hey, you know, where does this information start and where does the information finish so that you get the best possible uh, image quality. Um, yeah, when we're specking a system, um, we're really thinking about all the devices and all the, the inputs that we're expecting to receive on the video switcher and also asking that question, hey, how are we going to keep these in sync? Obviously not every camera has the ability to genlock and so that's really a big determining factor as to whether we'd use a frame sync over a genlock. Um, if, if a camera has the ability to receive sync, we're always going to opt to add, you know, genlock of, of some kind, whether it's black burst or tri-level, um, in order to actually keep all the devices in sync. Um, when it comes to a live environment, you know, we really start looking at all of these, um, even looking at frame rates of the entire system to really uh, figure out one, you know, what is the church wanting to achieve? Like, what do you want to see? How do you want the footage to look? But also, you know, how, is this going to be used purely for live or is this going to be used purely for uh, post-production? Um, when it's in a live environment, latency becomes really important because latency is that difference between seeing the movement with our eyes and how long it takes to see that same movement on a projector screen. Um, and when you have a system that's relying on a lot of these external, or, or when you have a system that's built, I should say, on a lot of, uh, on a distributed sync or a distributed gen lock. Um, we really get the lowest latency, meaning that um, we have the, le the least discrepancy between when we see a movement with our eyes and when we see that on the screen. You know, when it comes to streaming, um, really, as long as everything is in sync after the switcher and audio is aligned with video, um, you know, the beauty of being in like a post-production kind of world is you can almost get away with, with anything. Um, might not be totally true, but um, you do have a lot more flexibility, you know, where Genlock really plays into, into this equation more than anything is when we're trying to synchronize, um, you know, trying to create that hybrid of a live and broadcast um, experience. Yeah, there's, there's a few different ways to solve a problem with sync. Um, and obviously Genlock is, is probably the most tried and true and preferred. Um, Genlock for a number of reasons, um, obviously the latency like I've said. Um, also a lot of switches when you do use frame sync um, do strip audio out of the signal. So if you have an embedded audio signal uh, that is routing through a switcher and you engage a frame sync, um, you, you run the risk of actually um, losing the audio embedded and you have to go and essentially re-embed that audio later on. Where a, um, 
with, let's say, like a camera input where we can essentially disregard the audio or anything that might be coming uh, down that SDI, um, a frame sync is a great way to kind of quickly solve the problem and take an otherwise out of sync video source and put it in sync. When it comes to uh, Genlog versus frame sync, um, you know, sometimes the ecosystem has a very big impact on, on which direction we go. Um, for example, you know, Genlock we would typically use with, let's say like a professional system, like a ROS that is obviously very feature packed. Um, also, you know, a lot more expensive, but comes with a great level of support and um, great level of reliability. Genlock becomes our preferred method of, of sync for a system like that uh, versus, let's say like a black magic system, which is extremely affordable and honestly fills a great need for a lot of people. Um, but, you know, uh, employing Genlock in a system like that um, doesn't really make a lot of sense. And so we would typically use uh, frame sync as that achieves the same result uh, for a lower cost and, and doesn't introduce any of that added complexity.